information evaluation uh, course uh, that was in the in the summer uh, when we started talk, uh, doing the uh, the training and also uh, on the second uh, lecture in the characterization just a, a very quick review to remind you uh, of some of the uh, characteristics of some of the logs and how these characteristics will be changed uh, due to the gas uh, uh, existence in the reservoir actually when i talk about gas uh, this you may, you may differentiate between gas bearing reservoir which means gas reservoirs or gas actually that comes also in the reservoir after uh, being produced because Everybody know that uh, we have something called the bubble point. Bubble point is a pressure point where if your reservoir is an oil reservoir, for example, and you start producing it, the pressure will decrease. Uh, then uh, there is a certain pressure for the bubble points when the gas starts to build up. So in this case, we'll be, we'll be having three phases, the water and the gas and oil and the gas. Okay? So also the some of the wells that you drill or you evaluate after your reservoir reaches uh, pressure below the bubble point, you will also see these, these type of effects. Yeah? So the existence of gas will have some, uh, I can say, signatures on the logs that will help you out identify uh, the process. Okay? So first of all, the uh, composition of flows in pores in general, we touched base on this before. And we said, actually, if you look at any reservoir uh, in the pores that we are interested in, uh, what we find, you find two major flows, water and oil and gas, okay? Or both, actually. So it can be water, oil, and gas at the same time. When we look at the water uh, composition versus the hydrocarbon composition, water is H2O, and hydrocarbon is hydrocarbon. So it's actually hydrogen and carbon. Water is hydrogen and oxygen. So actually, this is a very important thing we found out from just looking at the uh, chemical composition of these fluids, that the water has hydrogen, oil and gas, they also have hydrogen. And the, the neutron tool took advantage of this. The advantage is that these flows, all these flows, they have hydrogen in it, regardless what the flow it is. The original water that was there before the migration of the hydrocarbon, and then the hydrocarbon itself, they all have, have hydrogen. So the, the people took advantage of having hydrogen in all the flows components, and they decided to uh, design a tool that actually measures the hydrogen component, and then they will relate the hydrogen to the porosity where they were the hydrocarbon and the water live in. Okay, so that was the basic idea that we uh, discussed it in details in the formation evaluation. Also, we touch base on this on the uh, in the second uh, webinar of the uh, characterization. So hydrogen is the component that's shared between all the fluids that we have in the reservoir. So if you measure hydrogen atoms, this can be translated to porosity. And that's all the main, the, the whole thing about, about the, the neutron tool, okay? So if I look at the neutron tool, it's mainly a neutron source. And this neutron source emits a high energy neutrons, which go into the formation and started to do some collisions with all the particles in there or all the atoms in there, let's put it that way. With the, with the collision of all the atoms, they lose energy. And we found out that the one that has the most effective collision on the neutrons is the hydrogen. Uh, a single collision can actually cause the, the, the neutron to lose all its energy. The only uh, atom that can do this is the hydrogen. So hydrogen is the most effective of slowing down the neutrons from being high energy neutrons to low energy. So we took this, uh, this criteria and we designed this tool accordingly. So you send the neutrons all the way. They actually make all collision and I can see it emits a very high energy neutron. And then all neutron collides with hydrogen and other elements, but the most effective element is the hydrogen. The reason is its mass is very close to the neutron mass. And then uh, hence they have the same mass, then the, they'll be very effective in slowing down the, uh, the, the neutron. Then we put actually two detectors, near detector and a far detector. And we actually looked at why we have two detectors. That's a compensation for the whole board. And also that was discussed in the formation evaluation webinar. So actually, if we need to get into more depth in why we're having this design, why we're having these two detectors, as I said, it's actually covered in the previous webinar. Okay, so the neutrons come out, uh, they make collisions with all these atoms and then uh, slows down and then go to a near detector and far detector. We take a ratio 
between the new detector counts and the far detector counts. And from this ratio, we translate it to, to porosity. But the most important part is, and that's what we really need to pay attention to, if you have less hydrogen, you have low porosity. Okay, just pay, pay attention to this. If you have less hydrogen, then you have low porosity. And if you have more hydrogen, then you have high porosity. Okay, so that's how the tool actually uh, translates the counts into, into porosity. And if you have very low number of hydrogen, then you don't have much of porosity because the hydrogen lives in the pores. Okay, so less hydrogen means low porosity, more hydrogen means high porosity. Keep this in mind, but this is, this is very, very critical. Also, I, I hear you can highlight these two things. Again, I'm repeating myself more and more. Less hydrogen means low porosity, okay? Let's keep this in mind. Now, let's assume that I'm having a structure that we also covered in the second webinar in the characterization, where I have multiple layers here of different lithology. We have clay, we have sand, lime, and dolomite, okay? And that's, this is the structure that contains the, the majority of the uh, lithology that we deal with and the majority of the reservoir that we deal with. We actually face clay beds, then we have sand or sandstone reservoirs, and we have carbonate, either being a, a limestone car uh, carbonate or a dolomite. Okay. Now, let's assume that my reservoir has a 20 PU. Well, this one has 20 PU, and this one has 20 PU, and this one has 20 PU. When we actually uh, look at how the neutron tool will react to this, and how the gamma ray tool will react to this. Well, the gamma ray, first of all, it will see the clay, and clay has a property of having high gamma ray uh, measurement. So the gamma ray will read high in front of the clay. But since the sand, lime, and dolomite are reservoirs, reservoirs has a characteristic of having low gamma ray. Okay, why? Because it doesn't have much of clay as the clay beds. If your reservoir has very high clay content, that's a bad reservoir. Okay, why? Because the clay will live in the pores, and then your effective porosity will be very low. Also, we talked about the effective porosity previously. And the effective porosity is what we call clay corrected porosity. So you can have 20 PU, but if clays live in the 20 PU, it can reduce it to 5 PU. Then you lost your porosity. Okay? So the assumption is that what well, the reservoirs that we have here are clean reservoirs and they don't have much clays. Okay. So in this case, here is my 20. How how the uh, the neutron tool will act to this and how the gamma ray tool will act to this. First of all, if I am in an oil reservoir and keep this in mind. If I have an oil reservoir, we discussed this in the in the previous webinar. Here is my gamma ray. Gamma ray will read high in front of my clay, and it will read low in front of my, my reservoir. Okay, this low means doesn't have to be that much low. Low means slower than the clay, to put it that way. So it's slower than the clay because it's not a clay bed, it's a reservoir. For the neutron tool, and, and since the API asked us to put this on a limestone scale. And that's why you have this one from negative 15 to 45. We talked about this so many times. Then we found that the clay will read very high frost. The reason is all clays, they have hydrogen in their composition. And since the neutron tool reacts to how much hydrogen do you have, then I will have actually high reading in front of the clay. Is this real porosity? No, because we know that clays are not really a reservoir and doesn't have porosity that the hydrocarbon can live in. Okay. So in this case, we will see high porosity, but we know that the high porosity is not real. Yeah, but it's only coming because clays, they have a lot of hydrogen in there. So that actually reflects how the neutron tool reacts. The neutron tool reacts mainly to the hydrogen component in anything. In clay, we have hydrogen component, then the clay will read high porosity. In the reservoir, we have hydrogen components coming from water and coming from hydrocarbon. So it will also give us some good porosity. So in this case, we'll see the first thing in front of the clay, we'll see the neutron will read high porosity. Okay? High porosity is in the order of, in the left side of the uh, of the 20, because it will be higher porosity. Now, when we put the sandstone on a limestone scale, we found that the sandstone will read lower porosity than 20, because we're putting sand on the limestone scale. Again, we discussed this in details in the second webinar in the characterization. <clears throat> Please go back and, and review this. We, we discuss it in details there. So in, in the sand, in front of the sand, you will see that the neutron tool will read less. Actually, it will read 16.5 if it's 20 PU. Okay? So it will read 16.5 since 
Do you put sandstone on limestone scale? We always say wrong lithology on wrong scale, it will give you a deviation from, rea from reality. Since the sandstone is the wrong, uh, wrong uh, lithology on the wrong scale, the scale is limestone. So putting sandstone on limestone, then your prostate will, will get affected. So the sand will read about 16 and a half PU in, in, in this zone. While in the second one, which is a limestone, now limestone on limestone. So it's the right prostate on the right scale. So there is no need for any differences. So on the limestone only, you will see the, lo the, ne the neutron tool will read exactly 20 because the right lithology on the right scale. The lithology is limestone and the scale is limestone. So it will read exactly 20 PU. Okay, there is no reason not to read different. When you go to the dolomite, it's another different or, or we call it wrong lithology on the wrong scale. It's a dolomite on a limestone. Okay, so in this case, you will see it will read higher porosity than the 20 to be 27.5. So in front of the sand, it reads lower. Okay, so the sand on the limestone scale, it will read lower. The lime on the limestone scale will read exact. Dolomite on the limestone scale will read higher. Right? Then we started looking at the density, how the density will, will react to this, okay? So in, in, just okay, uh, pay attention to this as well. Now, if I am in a gas reservoir, what's the difference between the gas reservoir in this case and the oil reservoir? The number of hydrogen atoms in gas is less than the number of hydrogen atoms in oil and the number of atoms of, in water. So gas will have less number of hydrogen than oil and than water. Okay, so what do you expect in this case? The reason is less hydrogen, it will give me lower frost. We agreed on this. If I have less hydrogen, I will get low frost. So this means the neutron tool will read lower porosity in gas reservoirs. The reason is very simple. Gas, they have low number of hydrogen component compared to oil and water. So in gas reservoir, expect your neutron tool will read very low process. Okay, so just keep this in mind from the understanding of how the tool works. The tool works on measuring number of hydrogen. Since the hydrogen in the gas is less than the hydrogen in the water and the hydrogen in the oil, then in this case, the porosity in, in, in the neutron porosity in, in any gas reservoir, it will read, it will read low. So this means Neutron log in gas reservoir, what will be the behavior? First of all, this one, the clay will stay the same because gas is not gonna live in the clay. Gas will live in my reservoir, okay? So gas is not gonna be in the clay, so the clay will, not, will never change. It will be the same, okay? How about the, 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 the sand? We said if the sand has gas in it, that even low porosity will be even much lower. So you're expecting it will read much lower porosity than even the original one. The original one was low because it was sand on limestone scale. Now, if there is gas in the sand, and since gas has much lower density, a uh, much lower hydrogen than the neutron and, uh, and the, the, than, the, than the oil and the water, then it will read lower than oil and water, okay? Again, for the limestone scale, it will be the same. If my lime 20 PU don't have oil or water, it has gas in it, then it will read lower porosity. So this one will be less than the 16 and a half that we, we had originally. This one will be less than 20. So what the gas will do to your limestone in this case, if my limestone 20 PU now is charged with gas, not with water or oil, it will read less porosity. So gas will actually make the, the neutron to read less porosity than it should. And the reason is, Gas has less hydrogen component compared to water and oil. Similarly, in the dolomite, it will read less. Since this is the high side of the, of the neutron, so reading less, it will come up at this point. So it will be reading less than it should. So that's the effect of the gas on my neutron tool. Why I, can, I see less porosity than normal? because gas has less hydrogen component compared to oil and water. And since the neutron tool reacts to the hydrogen component in your rod, then it will be very highly affected. So I see even lower porosity than, than the normal sand in, in lime, in, on limestone, 
lower porosity on, on the limestone formation and lower porosity in the dolomite formation as well. Okay, so that's the first thing. First thing is my neutron tool will read lower porosity than it should in, if, if my reservoir has gas in it, okay? The reason is gas has less hydrogen compared to both water and oil. All right, now let's just go to the density because we always combine neutron and density on the same track. So how the density will react to this? Well, if you look at this, it measures also bulk density. So the density tool measures bulk density. Now, the question is, bulk density is used to calculate density process. That's what we do. We take the bulk density and we calculate density porosity. How do we calculate density porosity? Density porosity is row matrix minus row bulk divided by row matrix minus row fluid. Since we put the neutron and the density on the same scale, and we discussed this in details before, then I have no choice about the row matrix, okay? We put both of them on the same scale, on the same track. The, tra the scale of the, line of the neutron is limestone scale. Then I have to use the limestone density for the density porosity, okay? To be consistent because the neutron and the density are plotted on the same track, okay? If they are plotted on the same track, then they have to be consistent in the scale. Since the API is asking us to put these logs on limestone scale, since the neutron includes row matrix, then the row matrix and the density process includes row matrix, then I have to put the row matrix as the density of the limestone. Then my, my PD will be 2.71 divided by row matrix is also 2.71. How about the row fluid? The row fluid is the calibration fluid. The calibration fluid is the water then the, the density of the water is one. So the density process will be 2.71 minus rho bulk divided by 2.71 minus, minus one. If I, need, if I go there and I see how the density will react in the oil, okay, then if I look at the density of the 20 PU, density of the, of the 20 PU is 2.32. The density of the 20 PU uh, limestone is, okay, hold on a second. The density of the 20, 20 PU sandstone is 2.32. Now let's use the density here and calculate the density porosity of the sand. Okay, density porosity is Phi D, row matrix minus row bulk divided by row fluid minus one, which is 2.71 minus one. And in this case, if I put this, it will give me a porosity of 22.2. 22.2 is higher than 20. 22.2 is higher than 20. So where is the density porosity will be? Here is my 20. So the density porosity will be on the other side. And that's why when you draw the density porosity, you see certain type of separation. Density to the left, neutron to the right. That separation, we call it the sandy stone separation. We are in an oil reservoir, okay? Now, what is the density of the limestone? 2.368. So I go for the density porosity here, it will be rho matrix, which is 2.71, minus rho bulk, which is 2.368, divided by row matrix 2.71 minus row fluid, which is one. If I do this calculation, I will get exactly 20. Why? Because it is limestone on limestone scale. Limestone on limestone scale, there is no reason to, to, to be different. So it will be reading exactly 20. So the neutron and the density will overlay only in front of the limestone. The reason is I'm using the limestone scale. And limestone is limestone lithology on limestone scale, there is no need for for any differences. Now, if I go to the dolomite, dolomite, 20% dolomite is 2.496 uh, gram per cc. If I take this and you plug it into the density equation, the density porosity equation, then your, your porosity will be 12.5. 12.5 is less than 20, okay? So then you will be seeing the density is actually going on the other direction. So we say that, in front of the sand, I see the neutron density will separate where density is to the left, neutron to the right. In front of the lime, they will overlay because it's a limestone on limestone. In front of the dolomite, they will separate at opposite to the sand where my uh, neutron is to the left, my density is to the right. Now, it is actually the same kind of separation with the clay. Now, how can I differentiate between the clay and the dolomite? We said in front of clay, I have to see the gamma ray reading high. 
So when I see this separation, that the neutron to left, density to the right, then in this case, I have to check with my gamma ray. If my gamma ray is high, I will call it clay. If my gamma ray is low, I will call it dolomite. So the dolomite and the clay, they share the same type of separation, but the judge, is it clay or is it dolomite? The gamma ray will do that for me, okay? So this is how the neutron density will react in front of, in, or in the case of oil reservoirs. Now, how about the gas on the, on the density? Well, density of gas is less than density of oil and density of water. So this will make that the bulk will be actually, if the bulk was 2.32 in the case of oil, then it will be less because it's now full of gas. And also the density of 2.368, uh, it will be less because my limestone is full of gas. And the 2.496, my density will be less because my reservoir now is full of gas. So the gas will make my density less. If I go and, uh, and try to calculate my density porosity in case of gas reservoir, here, is, here are my equations. I'm saying rho matrix, which is 2.71 minus rho bulk. If rho bulk is less, then the numerator becomes bigger. When the numer numerator becomes bigger, my density porosity will become even bigger, okay? So the density porosity here in front of the sand will be much bigger. So let's look at this. It will be higher than 22.6. So this means my density porosity will be much higher. Look at this. The separation is still there, but it becomes big. So the notice that you will see, if you are in a gas reservoir, that the separation still exists in, in, in the sandy stone, but the separation becomes very big, okay? So the separation was that small limited area, which is around six PU in the normal oil, but it becomes much bigger in case if you have gas. So if you have gas in sandy stone reservoir, you will see the separation between the neutron and density are really big, okay? Also, you will see here, if we calculate the porosity of the limestone full of gas, then the density porosity will be much higher than 20. So in this case, you will see also higher than 20 for the lime. Higher than 20 means the, new, the, the limestone scale, the limestone is not gonna be overlaying anymore. Even the limestone will actually have separation but that separation is due to gas. So the separation is due to gas becomes bigger, okay? If I go for the dolomite and I do the same, the frost will be higher than 12.5. So that will be this new, new one higher than 12.5. So you can see here, the separation becomes bigger, okay? So that's, that's, that's the way that you will see the gas effect. Any separation you will see there becomes, becomes bigger, except, for the separation of the dolomite becomes smaller. So the separation in case of gas in the dolomite okay, becomes a little bit smaller. Why? Because actually it, in it increases the porosity. So you can see the density porosity increasing going to the increased number of 20. So it's getting closer. And also the neutron will be, will be decreasing as well. So as you can see here, the gas effect will make the separation even more. Even the, 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 the two that you were overlaying, which is the limestone over limestone scale, they used to overlay, no, now they will also separate. So the effect of gas, it will, or if you are dealing with gas bearing reservoir, expect the neutron and the density will separate. You will see huge separation if your reservoir is sandy stone. You will see a small separation if your reservoir is dull limestone you will see a, even a smaller separation if your reservoir is dolomite, okay? But you will see separation anyway. You are not expecting that the neutron and the density will separate in front of the limestone because we said limestone on limestone is good, they should not separate. That's true if you have oil, but if you don't have oil, if you have gas, the gas effect will make a separation even in the limestone. How about the, the neutron density? How about the porosity? The porosity is still the average porosity. Remember, we said the neutron porosity is not the correct porosity. The density porosity is not the correct porosity. The correct porosity is the average neutron density porosity. The average neutron density porosity, even in the gas reservoir, is the correct porosity. So even if you see the more effect of the gas reservoir, 
you still have the the average is the correct uh, the correct process. Okay, so identification of gas reservoirs, the gas zones are easily identified using combined neutron density logs. Very easy. Dense neutron, neutron, and density logs are separated more in gas reservoir compared to oil, and the neutron density average process is still your right porosity even if the gas existed. Okay, I need to summarize this because it's very important. Here is the situation where you have oil. Here, here is the type of separation, very small separation. In the limestone, in the limestone for oil, they are overlaying. In the dolomite, they are also separated. Okay, if I if I look at the gas reservoirs now, what will happen here is that this one will increase. Okay, and you can see there, this one will also show separation, and this one will also show separation. So the gas will do separation, but it will increase separation for sand increase separation for lime and decrease separation for dolomite okay so this is actually the major effects of gas reservoir so to identify say this is a gas zone look at the separation separation will be huge in the sandstone and it will be separation on limestone you don't expect any separation between neutron and density on limestone unless you have gas reservoir so if you have a gas reservoir you see the type of separation also, you see the separation in dolomite, but you may see you may see the separation in dolomite sh shrinking a little bit. The reason that it shrinks because the effect of, of gas on the on the dolomite. Okay. Okay. All right. Again, the the uh, the right porosity is the average neutron density porosity as we defined it before. Right? Okay. Now, how can I identify salt and anhydride from not? Again, guys, you all, always learn this. You need to actually to go to the basics of things to really help you identify things. Don't 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 memorize uh, what the tool will do or what the tool will have or what the tool will show. So and I just go and see what are the basics of the tool measurement. Let's just go and for example, salt. Salt is halite. Salt is actually we call it halite. So how the halite will react on the neutron and the density? Let's just go first of all and look what is halite. Halite is NaCl, sodium chloride. Ask yourself a question now. Is there any hydrogen in here? The question is no. It doesn't have any hydrogen. So if it doesn't have any, any hydrogen, what the neutron tool will do? Neutron tool is not going to find any hydrogen. If it didn't find any hydrogen, it will give you zero porosity. It's as simple as such. So you don't, don't try to memorize things. Understand what are the basics of all these tools. The basic is our light is NaCl. The neutron tool, when it sees halite, it doesn't see any hydrogen. Since the neutron tool is not seeing any hydrogen, it's not going to give you any porosity. As simple as such. So in front of halite, it will give you zero porosity. Okay. So this is the first thing. So first of all, not radioactive. So the gamma ray is not going to read any high gamma ray. This is one thing. Second, second, it doesn't have any hydrogen. So in this case, the neutron will give you zero. How about the density? Density of halite is 2.13. So I will see also low density. So I will see zero porosity on the neutron. I will see low density on the, on, the, on the density. I will see low gamma ray, okay? So in this case, how about the resistivity? And the resistivity will read low or high, okay? First of all, salt, is this salt actually dissolved in water? No, it's actually a salt bed. Salt bed is very resistive. Somebody say, oh, salt is actually uh, conductive. No, salt to water is conductive. But salt itself is not. The salt bed itself, there is no water in there. Salt water is the conductive one, not the salt. Salt is not conductive. Salt is very resistive. You cannot actually uh, pass any current through salt bed. Okay? But if you put the salt in water, it makes water more conductive. So the salt water is the conductive. Then some people actually have this. this Mysterious thing in, the, in their mind. No, salt is not conductive. Salt to water is conductive. Okay, so but salt is very, very resistant. Salt will be very, very resistant because it has no water in there. So salt is not, it's, it's not, an, it's not an ACL solution, salt to water, it's salt bed. Salt bed is very, very resistant. Let's just take an example here. It is a log, for example. If I look at the gamma ray, it is very low gamma ray, as you can see there. Okay. And my density here is reading low. This is the 1.95, it's reading very low. 
my neutron is reading zero. Okay, here is the zero. So my neutron is reading zero. My density is reading low. My gamma ray is reading low. My resistivity is reading high. Okay, so these are the cases now. The, my, my neutron is reading zero. My density is reading low. My gamma ray is reading low. My resistivity is reading high. That's a typical, typical response of any salt as well. So here is my neutrons reading zero. Here is my density is reading low. Here is my resistivity is reading high. Here is my gamma ray is reading low. The four components we just talked about, these four signatures, if you see the four signature, signatures at the same time, all combined in one of the sections of your log, you need to mark this section as salt section. Low gamma ray, low density, zero neutron, high resistivity, that's a salt halide section, okay? So the halide is very easy to find out by just knowing the properties of whatever you look at and how your tools are measuring. What are these tools measuring? So in this case, you can easily, easily find this out. You don't have to memorize or keep in mind or whatever. No, it's, it's just knowing the responses of, of your tools will help you out. Okay? For the anhydrides on neutron density, we need to go back and see what is anhydride. Anhydride is calcium sulfate, CaSO4, calcium sulfate. Does it have any uh, potassium, thorium, or uranium? No, so it does not have gamma ray. It does it have any hydrogen? No, it does not have hydrogen. So if it doesn't have hydrogen, it will read zero neutron. It's very simple. Neutron reflects hydrogen. So if it doesn't have hydrogen, it gives you zero, zero uh, porosity. Also, it doesn't have any uh, uh, potassium, thorium, or uranium to give you gamma ray. Okay. How about the density? Density is very high. So the difference here, so anhydrite will have very low gamma ray. Anhydrite will have zero porosity, similar to what? Similar to halite. But the halite density is very low, the 2.3. The density here for anhydrite is very high. So the difference between halite and, and anhydrite is mainly in the density. The other three are the same. You will see low gamma ray, you will see zero porosity, and also you see very high resistivity because there is not really any water here in the CaSO4 to make the resistivity reading low. Okay? There is nothing there but calcium sulfate. So in this case, how about the resistivity? So also no water it will give you a very high resistance. If I go to the same log, okay, and that's, that's in the Gulf of Suez in Egypt. If we go to the same log, the second section, look at this section. Porosity is very low, okay? Similar to the porosity of the soil, okay? So it's very, very low porosity. Well, look at the density, it's very high. Look at the density here, very low density. Look at here, very high density. So the density is very high. The neutron is reading zero. The resistivity is reading very high. The gamma ray is reading low. So it has low gamma ray. It has uh, zero porosity. It has high resistivity. The only difference from this and the halide is the density here is reading low and the density here is reading high. So once you look at this, this is your low gamma ray, similar to this. But instead of low density, it will be high density. Zero neutron, zero neutron, high resistivity, high resistivity. So what is the difference? between halide beds and anhydride beds. The main difference is the density. Density in halide will read low because the density of halide is low. Density in anhydride will read high because the density of anhydride will, will, uh, is, is very high. So this is an anhydride bed and this is a halide bed. So it's very straightforward by just understanding what are the tools measured and what is the property of the thing that you're looking at. Look at the property and use the basic understanding of your logs. With every log looks the same. Log, the neutron log looks at hydrogen. Density looks at density. Resistivity looks at, is it conductive? And the conductivity happens with having by either, either any metallic components or any hydrogen, okay? So in this case, the, the conductivity of the water components and the metallic components. You don't see this in any one of these two, neither the halide nor the hydride. That's why the city has to read hard. If you look at the rock itself, does it have potassium, thorium, and uranium? No, it doesn't. So in this case, why it should read a high gamma ray? There is no reason for it to read a high gamma ray. That's why they read low, low gamma ray. Yeah? So identification of anything, guys, just just look at what are you looking for, uh, what are you looking at, 
and then decide what are the components of all these minerals and what every tool will react with every tool will react to something else, something specific in the composition of your uh, of, of your life. okay so this is actually the first uh, two things which is identification of the uh,